Hello and welcome again. Thank you for tuning into our series on grief and mental health. Now, this episode was created to provide you an introduction to the relationship between a state of grief and mental disorders. First and foremost, I want to clarify that grieving is not a mental disorder. Grieving is not pathological. Even though you may have some experience, some uh, psychological symptoms such as depressive or anxious thoughts, maybe a persistent deep sadness, unwanted intrusive thoughts, a feeling of guilt, and so on. Having a psychological symptom in response to the grief of a loved one can be very uncomfortable and disconcerting. But that's different than having a mental disorder. However, it would be inaccurate to pretend that there's no relationship between grief and one's mental state. Let me explain. First, grief is a natural and normal reaction to losing a loved one. You're going to hear me say that many times if you watch many more of these videos. Whereas, mental disorders are diagnosed by mental health professionals based on specific criteria uh, about psychological symptoms. So you might respond, wait a second, Ron, that definition of a mental disorder sounds a lot like what I'm experiencing as I grieve. Well, you're right. Experiencing grief can certainly elicit a variety of psychological and emotional symptoms, but grief-induced symptoms are not abnormal for an otherwise mentally healthy person. We don't want to put a label of a mental disorder on a natural and understandable response to the loss of your loved one. So how can we distinguish between grief and mental illnesses? Well, the answer to that question is not always simple or easy. Why? Well, consider the following. Grief and some mental health disorders share very common symptoms. Another reason is a person already struggling with a specific mental disorder after losing a loved one may experience greater psychological and emotional symptoms. Despite experiencing some disturbing symptoms, it is best to start with the assumption that you are simply experiencing grief-related symptoms. Again, unless you were diagnosed with a mental disorder by a competent mental health professional prior to experiencing the loss. You might be struggling with thoughts and questions such as, I think I've lost my mind. I can't focus. I can't perform simple tasks or remember anything. Or how about, I've read on the internet about clinical depression and I have a lot of those symptoms. Or, sometimes I believe there must be some mistake. He or she can't be dead or, I hate to say it, but I'm pretty sure that I saw him or her in a crowd. Am I delusional? My anxiety's gone through the roof. I'm worrying about everything and I'm completely overwhelmed. I've never been this fearful. Or, I don't even know what day it is most of the time. Am I experiencing dementia? Those are questions that people ask. So let me ask you, were you experiencing symptoms like this prior to losing your loved one? Well, if not, then the simple answer is that you were almost certainly just experiencing debilitating but natural elements of the grieving process. I want you to really hear this. The truth is that grief really can be this bad. It's awful. And I'm sad to report that while some of these symptoms will lessen in time, there's no specific timeline and there's no order to healing from a loss of someone important in your life. What I can say to you is that the emotional and psychological pain you are feeling, as bad as it is, most often is attributable to your state of grieving, not a mental disorder. At the same time, if you are struggling with concerns for your psychological health, you know, please go see your primary care physician and or maybe seek out a licensed mental health professional to help you sort out your concerns about the state of your mental health or get you some help to relieve some of your symptoms. Could there be anything wrong with seeking out the help of a qualified professional? I don't think so. Beyond this overview of the relationship between grieving and mental health, I've created a series of episodes regarding this topic with more detail that you may find helpful. I look forward to walking through those with you when you are ready to watch them. So I'm going to close this episode with some bullet points I want you to take to heart. Grief and mental illness sometimes share certain specific types of symptoms. Grief, however, is a normal and natural response to loss and should not be considered 
a mental illness on its own. If you had a mental illness diagnosed before you lost your loved one, your related symptoms, they might get worse in response to your loss and the grief you are feeling. If your mental state is concerning to you, seek out the help of a medical doctor and or a mental health professional. As always, here comes the stepping stone. I want to get you thinking about these things. If you're thinking, I can't let myself be like this. I have to be strong. Well, please challenge your thinking on that one by asking yourself, do I really have to be strong when I'm feeling overwhelmed and weak? Does that even make sense? And then consider who might be able to help me get through this time and what might I ask of them to help me? And please reflect on the following. Grieving is a natural and normal response to loss. The path to healing requires giving ourselves grace, allowing ourselves to feel, and avoiding forming expectations of quick, resilient healing. Trying to overcome grief through determination or avoidance merely delays the inevitable and lengthens the grief journey. Well, thank you for watching this episode. I encourage you to look for my additional episodes on this topic regarding grief and mental illness. I hope this episode has been helpful to you in some small way. I look forward to sharing more with you in the near future when you're ready.